Consumer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Paper and plastics packaging business Impact has unveiled a new 350 million rand PET recycling operation in Wadeville, aimed at reducing the impact of plastic waste in South Africa. Natasha Urendal tells us more. Impact's new 20,000 meter square bottle to bottle PET recycling facility has paved the way for improved recycling rates of PET in South Africa the reduction of carbon dioxide emissions and diverting waste from nearly at capacity landfills. Industry Body Petco CEO Sherry Skoltz tells us more. Today we proudly celebrate the collaborative actions of no less than six organizations and companies that stood up themselves and made big things happen and worked together to bring this incredible project to fruition. The Industrial Development Corporation, the Department of Trade and Industry, Coca-Cola Southern Africa, ABI, the soft drinks division of SAB Miller, Impact Polymers, and Petco can all take satisfaction from the fact that because of this new plant, the amount of PET bottles collected for recycling will increase by 29,000 tons per year, generating a new raw material directly from what was previously considered waste, material that would have been sent to landfill sites. Total PET, virgin and recycled, consumption in South Africa is around 198,000 tonnes a year, 68% of which is consumed in the beverage industry for bottle manufacture. Petco is targeting the collection and recycling of some 70% of the plastics by 2022. The PET recycling rate for post-consumer bottles in South Africa stands at 52%. That's over 1.7 billion bottles per year. It translates to 4.5 million bottles each and every day. This is comparable with a number of European recycling rates in countries such as France and the United Kingdom. Our projections show the plant will contribute to the industry reaching a bottle recycling rate of 70% by 2022. At the estimated growth in the market, this will amount to no less than 170,000 tonnes. The potential for job creation and other peripheral benefits of the first PET recycling plant in Africa to meet the Coca-Cola company's full PET certification requirements to package the company's soft drinks were also highlighted. The benefit of this plant is sixfold. Firstly, MPAC customers will be supplied with a reliable and high quality source of recycled PET raw material. Waste collectors will have a committed buyer of used bottles. The benefits to the environment are substantial. The new facility will supply an additional 21,000 tonnes of RPET resin per annum to the PET packaging industry. By using food grade recycled PET, less energy is used and a significant reduction in net emissions is achieved. And in an energy constrained environment like South Africa, this cannot be overemphasized. The technological innovation required to operate the plant will have long-lasting impacts on the future direction of the plastics industry in South Africa. While developing impacts plan to enter this business, the project team's research included visits to Mexico, France, Germany, Bangladesh and Peru. Plants using different technology and facing particular challenges were examined and valuable information about what is needed to establish a viable and sustainable plastics recycling business in South Africa was learned. Importantly, consumers will also benefit from the use of recycled PET in packaging as their choice to both recycle and buy recycled products will lower their environmental impact. But perhaps the most significant benefit of all, because of this plant, a significant number of additional jobs will be created. ABI Bottling, an SAB Miller subsidiary and bottling partner of Coca-Cola, Impact's anchor client, would consume 6,000 tonnes a year of the 21,000 tonnes a year RPET food and beverage packaging output from the facility. Other news making headlines this week. Corporates are urged to support youth development through football program and South Africa not immune from Brexit fallouts. The South African Football Association's development agency is urging corporate companies to partner and invest in its football-based Safe Hub program, which aims to encourage youth to engage in life skills programs through the use of football. So we've partnered with um, an NGO called Amandla Edu Football, who have developed what's called a Safe Hub. It is a 
football-based youth development program that involves an infrastructure build, so an artificial pitch, floodlights, and a youth center, 600 square meter youth center, and then a program of youth development that uses five-a-side football as its core, um, that in the original site that we are modeling, uh, modeling the program on has two and a half thousand kids a week coming to the center, playing five-a-side football, um, having a program of football-based life skills, educational support, a night league to prevent crime and violence, and has had unbelievable outcomes that have been tracked uh, very carefully over the last number of years. And so we be, we've, we're partnering, partnering with them as the National Association, and our intent is to roll out a hundred of these safe hubs throughout the country, one in every district in the country, and then in the metros, more than one in densely populated areas. The outcome of the Brexit referendum on Thursday, June 23rd, is not of mere academic interest to South Africa and could have real consequences for the country's trade relations with both Britain and the European Union. South Africa trades a lot with Europe and we, you trade probably within Europe more with Britain than with the rest of our uh, European Union partners put together, or very, or nearly so. Germany. Germany first, Britain second. Germany is a huge market. I know South African farmers are able to uh, negotiate access for their products. And it's brilliant from their standpoint and yours because winter occurs at different times of the year. And you can get your fruit and vegetables and your wine into Europe at just the right time. And uh, that's very, very helpful. But um, the British market is considerable. And I'm afraid that all the negotiations that were agreed between, say, South Africa and the European Union 28 would have to be at least discussed, possibly renegotiated in detail, certainly as far as your British market's concerned. I mean, it might be done over a weekend. It might take years. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.